Yes. Let us see. You all come near, please. started on the first day or on yesterday the prophecy about the threefold anointings that we 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 got this inspiration and uh, understanding that every one every baptized person is sharing the threefold anointing of Jesus that is the anointing of priestly, kingly, or kingly, priestly, and prophetic. So when, when we say, Our Father who art in heaven, you already understood what is the meaning of who art in heaven. Then we say, Thy kingdom come. So it's such a huge thing, but we understood the anointing of the king and the kingdom is relating to the first, the incarnation. As king, he took all flock under him, with him, in him. So that is why when in the Holy Mass we say, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. It is His King. He has, he has the prerogative upon all creation because He is the Creator. Again, I don't know. Again, I am feeding that inspiration. In you know, in Matthew's Gospel, before the multiplication of the bread and fish, you know that a boy, they, uh, he, uh, they say to the Lord, send them away, it's already late, they, they have to go to their villages and eat something. And Jesus said, you give them food. What, we? Where can we get so much food for so many? So he knew what he's going to do. So he asked, do you have something? A boy has five glasses of bread and two fish. Okay, now point I want to bring home, he then said, bring that to me. All this is his expression of kingdom. And send John Chrysostom, his interpretation is, he took that, the bread and the fish and raised his head to the heavens and he prayed. He lifted up these gifts. So Saint John Chrysostom says, it represents the whole creation because the bread represents the fruit of the earth and the work of the human hands and the fish represents the fruit of the sea. So in his offering, he offered the sea and earth together. Imagine. That is his kingdom, his kingdom. So in his kingdom, we are not only we human beings, the whole creation. So again, St. John Paul II's, one of his encyclical, his uh, apostolic letter is Oriendale Lumen, that is the light of the East. It is very dear to me as a Oriental Christian. I am from Oriental Church. I am a zero Malabar right person. So it is, uh, oh, we must know not only for Oriental churches, it is a teaching for the whole Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So every Catholic should know Catholic Church has 24 individual churches. It's a, it's a church comprising of 24 individual churches and the biggest membered church is the Latin church and there are 23 oriental churches in this, 23 oriental churches. One of that is Siro Malabar, Siro Malagara, Byzantine, Coptic and so many such. So in this teaching St. John Paul II said, the bread a material and the water, the wine, these are material, but these are offered in the Holy Mass and they are transubstantiated, their substance changed and they become, they become the body and blood of Christ. And a beautiful word what John Paul II mentioned there is, that is theophorical, theophorical. You can write down that word, theophorical, like theological, theophorical. Theophorical means a substance carrying God, carrying God, theophorical. And now the point is, St. John Paul II says that that is how not only human beings will be transformed, even the material world will be transformed. Like this 
bread made out of wheat and the wine and the water is transformed. Now, from all over the world, in every holy altars, every day, this material world represented by this bread, wine and water is transformed. So like this, this visible world, by the time in the second coming, the humanity who died and become decayed with the test, they will raise up in a glorified body, living in heaven. What is heaven now we understand? With Jesus in the glorified body. So that is the end. But at that time, even the material world will be transformed. So people say, oh, the end is coming. Everything will be destroyed. Everything will end. But everything will be transformed to a new material world. So paragraph 1042, <laughs> that's very interesting. That's very interesting. 1042. The hope of the heaven. So this is what the kingdom. The kingdom, what Jesus was preaching, is only a beginning. He inaugurated the kingdom. But when will be the kingdom come? Kingdom comes in its full measure in his second coming. And what will be the great event at that time? That is why when Jesus came to the house of Lazarus, uh, uh, he said, they said, oh, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. But then, he said, your brother will resurrect. Okay? Now, when he said, your brother will resurrect, immediately, Martha was declaring the credo. Yes, we know, he will resurrect in the last day. So, they believed the resurrection in the last day. But how many people believe? We, although we say, what is the resurrection of the last day? Yeah. Now, I will read. This paragraph is very important. 1042. You got it? 1042. Mm -hmm. yes. You got it? Yes. yes. At the end of time, the kingdom of God will come in his fullness. That is what when we say, thy kingdom come. At the end of time, the kingdom of God will come in its fullness. After the universal judgment, <clears throat> the righteous will reign forever with Christ. Now, very important one word is the next word. Glorified in body and soul. You got it? Glorified in body and soul. So humanity, we all, we die means our body separated from the soul, our body decayed and gone to earth. Our soul go to God. That is what death means. We were buried. But all those who are buried or cremated, their body do not exist, but they are, they all will be resurrected. That is what the meaning, glorified in body and soul. So what will be the end when Jesus comes in the, his second coming? Before, uh, at that time, the whole humanity will resurrect. Immediate thinking where all these people will stand. <laughs> the whole humanity will say where they will stand. All these things, interesting question. They will be spiritual bodies. They don't need space. They will be spiritual bodies. Glorified in body and soul. The universe itself will be renewed. The universe. Yeah. Universe, this material universe will be renewed. 
And St. John Paul II says, this way, like the bread, transformed to become body of Christ. What body? Listen, body of Christ. What are we receiving in the Eucharist? The resurrected body of Christ. So imagine, it is a advance of the universal transformation. The whole, so we must believe he will come again. What will happen when we come again? We must believe this. When he come again, the whole humanity will receive. You know, every day when I receive the Holy Eucharist, Lord, I am there with you. Now and when you come again. When you come again. The body we are receiving today is the same body with which he will come again. And when we receive it, it's a guarantee. Ah, you will be with me when I come again. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> it is a pledge. It's an advance. The body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life eternal. This is how we have to completely say. Yeah. But we have no time to say everybody is given. Yeah. Body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ. The body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life eternal. Mm. Eternity to eternity. Mm. We are receiving. So when we receive this, Lord, we will be together when you come again naturally. Yes. So that faith in the second coming, in its full understanding, then only our faith is right. So in the Catechism 988, I think, it says, yeah, faith in the credo, the first part is faith in God the Father. No, no problem to believe. Yeah, creation, we see the creation of the, and Jesus, people have witnessed Jesus, Son of God, he died, he rose, no difficulty to believe. <laughs> but what is the difficult thing to believe? Difficult thing to believe is something what is not happened yet. What is that? He's coming again. So it says that it culminates in the proclamation of resurrection of the dead on the last day and life everlasting. So our faith in, in the, the credo that we proclaim, the last article of the credo, believing in that, that is resurrection of the dead and life everlasting. Believing in that, our, our faith becomes strong in 997, yeah, 97, 97 or 99. 99 then, no, to the power of Jesus for believing, yeah, 991. 991 says, belief in the resurrection of the dead has been an essential element of the Christian faith. Essential element. We say, I believe in Jesus Christ, we say all the credo, but when we say, Resurrection of the dead? Oh, I don't know how all the people will resurrect. People say, how these people who are eaten by animals, they will resurrect? How the people who are cremated will resurrect? <laughs> all these are doubt. We must concretely believe this because it is an essential element of the faith. Our faith becomes so strong when we believe that the Christian faith from its beginning, the confidence of Christian is the resurrection of the dead. Believing this, we live. Believing this, we live. That is the confidence. That when we are, when we are living, we believe we will die and we will Praise again. But we're in him, and that's what he did, so yeah. why should we not? Yeah. 
What's not to believe? If we're in him, and this is what he did, he died yeah. and he rose again, then we should do the same. Exactly. Very simple then. So that's how we ended that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, Ephesians 2, yeah. 6, you know. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 6. So we, you no, know, he, he resurrected and we went up to him, but our body is not yet. What we have to believe is our body not yet, but this body will die, it will be decayed, it will become dust, and that body will resurrect mm -hmm. and unite with the soul. That's very interesting. It is written here in another place that 997, what is raising? Yes, 997. What is raising? In death, the separation of the soul from the body, the human body decays, and the soul goes to meet God. Pay attention. While awaiting its reunion, reunion. See it, eh? While awaiting its reunion with its glorified body, so soul goes to meet God, and now soul is waiting for its body. Partner, partner, <laughs> partner, the body. It's in the body shop. <laughs> God, in His almighty power, will definitely grant incorruptible life to our bodies by reuniting them with our souls through the power of the power of Jesus' resurrection. Once again, everybody pay attention. God in his almighty power, uh, we are talking about resurrection of the dead. God in his almighty power, this is his almighty power. What is that? He will definitely grant incorruptible life to our bodies by reuniting them with our souls through the power of Jesus' resurrection. So Jesus' resurrection we have to believe not only for understanding when Jesus, I am the resurrection, but also through this resurrection. He gave resurrection to the dead. Actually, it's very interesting. I tell you another, uh, that is by St. John Damascene, uh, a very great church father, Saint, uh, John Damascene. This John Damascene was such a defender of faith and such a voracious writer, and uh, the king or the emperor of that time was so angry with him and the emperor cut his hand, cut his hand, and hanged on a post on the road. But his comrades or companions found out and brought that hand in a couple of days or so and put it back. It fitted and it became very much healed. Only there was a small mark remained and he continued writing. His strong defense on the church. Mm. These are the church fathers. Mm. And, and because of his defense, the king or emperor become angry and cut his hand, but uh, his companions brought that hand and fit it. It becomes completely active and he continued writing up to 104 age. 104. That is Saint John Damascene. And he is the one who has written so great, uh, let me see, 826. <laughs> I got it. See, <laughs> as soon as I turned, I got it. 626. 626. This is a very important teaching. How? When we die, and how when we raise, you know, very interesting question. I ask that question, or I put that question, then it will be interesting. 
how do we know our body will be united with our soul? Will he dis unite with somebody's soul? At the, when the racing time, our body which is decayed, it's all identity is gone. How this body will recognize our soul? God made us, so he must know how to put us back together. Yeah, yeah it's very interesting. In the computer field, it is, uh, we call it syncing, you know, in a, when, a, when a material for editing a project, when we send to some other country, we don't send the whole project, we only send a link. And then we put that link, tuck, it sync. We call it, sync. it sync. It sinks. Praise God. Eh? In the computer or in any... So in the same way, yeah, now I read this. Since the author of life who was killed is the same living one who has risen. Since the author of life who was killed is the same living one who has risen. The divine person, now this is about Jesus' own situation. The divine person of the Son of God necessarily continued to possess his human soul and body, separated from each other by death. So what is death of Jesus means? His human soul and body separated from each other by death. When Jesus died means his human soul and body separated. Death means separation. By the fact Christ's death, his soul was separated from his flesh, John Damascene. His one person his one person is not itself divided into two persons. This is what interesting, okay? When he body and soul separated, his one person is not itself divided into two persons. For the human body and soul of Christ have existed in the same way from the beginning of his earthly existence. The human body and soul of Christ have existed in the same way from the beginning of his earthly existence. Now, pay attention. In the divine person of the world, yeah, beginning of his earthly existence in the divine person of the world and death and in death although separated from each other both, both remained with one and the same person of the world so it is in another way I, I say in another way when God created us, God did not create our soul and body separately. Correct? God created us as one, one person. So we in one person, one person means with the soul and body. When it's death, it's separated. Yeah? When it's in death, but in death it is separated. So. In, but in separation, but in the both person, this divine nature is remaining. When God created us, body and soul, one person, eh? mm -hmm. now imagine, now see, this is two things, but it is one actually. God created us one. But by death, it is separated. 
But even if it is separated, the divine nature in both remains same. Uh, the divine nature in the soul, easy to understand, the soul has divine nature. But even the body has a divine nature. Now, our difficulty is, oh, that body died, body is uh, decayed. When body decays, the divine nature is not decaying. <laughs> now the question is, but where is that divine nature of that dead man? It's with God. Ah, that is why we have to understand not about the clouds. <laughs> it is with God. Or the divine nature exists. So, you know, the divine nature is one in the soul and body. When we die, our soul easily understand with the divine nature go to the Father, but the body go to the earth, decayed. But the divine nature in the decayed body exists. Now, now pay attention, now pay attention. Now this divine nature is the one which recognizes that soul. Understand? Yes. So that no mistake will happen. <laughs> Thomas Paul's body has a divine nature which is a common factor. Common factor with my soul. So when my body resurrects, this divine nature will sing with the soul of this partner, partner, partner. <laughs> Is it interesting? Is it interesting? <laughs> Otherwise, we have a doubt. Oh, so many people are restricting whose soul will join, whose body will join with whose soul. How it is controlled? It is perfectly controlled. You agree? Yes. Yes, doctors? Yes. You know, I tell you, once we know this, you know, once we know this, we have such an excitement to have that resurrection very fast. <laughs> that is why we are eager to have the resurrection. If you are eager to have the resurrection, you have to die. So then we are not bothered about the death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please, please let me die. Let me die so that I can resurrect. You are no more worried about the death. That means only separation of body and soul. Both are existing. Soul is with God, body is in the earth. And the divine component, divine nature of the soul and body also exist. So this common factor, the soul has a divine nature. The soul's divine nature is calling, hello, when are you coming? Come fast. Come fast, I am waiting for you. I am waiting for you. Oh, wait, 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 I cannot come alone. The Lord has to come and give me reception. <laughs> so that is why we cry, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come soon. Let the end come soon. But the problem is, it's still why, why, what is the delay? Why that world is not ending? The delay is, Jesus said, uh, Matthew, Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, 14 says that, uh, <laughs> and this gospel, see, important, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. Yes. Amen. So why the delay? Delay is we are not preaching. Yes. Today's gospel, you see what today's reading, you see St. Paul says, it is not something I am doing, but it is my duty. What to me if I do not preach? It is a duty of every Christian to preach. And we are sleeping. We are enjoying our life. Nobody feel it is their responsibility to preach. Why it is a responsibility? 
this gospel. What is this gospel? So many people are speaking gospel about so many things, but that is not really gospel. Mm. <laughs> this gospel of the kingdom, exactly the way Jesus understood, Jesus preached. People preach so many things. Anyway, I don't criticize, but what is the gospel of the kingdom? So we have to learn the teachings of the church, Evangelii Nunciandi, Redemptoris Missio. These are the two important documents to understand what is gospel preaching. Evangelii Nunciandi is the very small booklet, but that is the master one, in which in paragraph 7, Pope Paul VI says, gospel, Jesus himself is the good news of God. <laughs> Jesus himself is the good news. Why? God become man. For what? To man become God. Heaven on earth, man on heaven. That is the gospel. We think uh, if you do all these things, you will go to hell, okay? That is not the gospel. Jesus said in another way, the good news is, a man had a hundred sheep and one is lost. He will go behind that lost sheep till he finds them. You know that, that's very interesting. That is gospel. You know, in, when you visit Holy Land, they will, the guides will show a place of the old caves where the sheep were kept, you know. You might yeah. have noticed, yeah. they said, this is the caves where the sheep used to be cared for. And the shepherds used to sleep at the edge of the cave, yeah. so that no sheep will go out or no thief will come in. The shepherds were so careful. Now the interesting thing is, in one cave, there are different groups of the sheep and different shepherds. One is shepherd number one, his sheep, shepherd number two, his sheep. Shepherd. Now, how do they recognize? <coughs> it's interesting. And each shepherd has a voice. The, the sheep recognize the voice of the shepherd. So that is what Jesus said, my sheep will they recognize my voice. So it is like this. That is the voice of one shepherd. Then all that sheep will, of that shepherd will come. And now the shepherd will say, Okay, that means now you can follow me. And he starts walking and he goes behind the, after the desert into a green pasture. And when it came to the green pasture, the shepherd said, <laughs> So, now the sheep know, now we can start eating, eating all the grass. Then, then they should go and drink water. And then they lie down and then they chew the cut, you know, yeah. chewing the cut. And now the time is come to go back. Now the shepherd will again say, Now all the sheep must come back to go back. That is the time <coughs> he will count. He will count 10, 15, 20, 25, so 50, 60, 90, 95, 98, 99. One sheep is missing. And now he forgot about all the 99, you see? Yeah. And he ran after, where is that cross sheep? Because he cannot go back till he get this sheep. And so he go around, there is no, not finding. And then he go behind that green pastures, there are small bushes and small forest type of thing. 
then he go deep, deep, then that she be somewhere here. And then he got consolation. Oh, where are you hiding? Then again, so he could find out where that sheep is. And then finally, he found the sheep. The sheep is fallen in a pit and lying there. Then this, he lifted up this sheep. Oh, you must remember that moment. <laughs> oh, now I will not put you down. I will take you on my shore and days. And he is so happy. Come on, child. I found my lost sheep. I found my lost sheep. <laughs> we all will go. Can you imagine? This is the good news. This is the good news. This is the good news. Do you think this is what we are preaching? Luke, for Luke chapter 15. The first words of Luke chapter 15 is this. Because the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Why is he sitting with the sinners? Why is he having friendship with that prostitute? That prostitute is touching him. That man is touching him. Why is he having friendship with this? They were murmuring. So he said, A man had a hundred sheep. All that thing because the Pharisees used to have so many sheep and they are very strict. They will not allow one sheep is lost. Very strict. The shepherd cannot come back without that lost sheep. So he take he took that as a parable to teach, and he says, like this man was so happy in finding the lost sheep. So in the heaven, my father is happy when you find one lost soul, uh, one soul which repents, or one soul which is converted. Amen. And then another parable, a woman had ten coins yeah. and one is lost. And she kept on searching in her room. It, so it is inside the house. And finally, she found out and said, I lost, I got my lost toy. And then the third is, in Luke chapter 15, is the lost son. We know that. The son which was... So now we should understand these three parables, lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. It actually has an interconnection. This lost sheep is like the younger son who went to the, he, he went to the, went away from home and lost, and finally he got converted and came back. And the elder son was in the house, but like this coin is lost. Why? When this younger son came back, we know the story, father was so happy. He did not blame him, where is that money? Where is that funds? Where is that inheritance? What have you done with that? Why have you? He did not ask anything. He was so happy, he hugged him. He gave him a new garment. He gave him a new ring. He gave him a new pair of shoes and made a big feast in the home. He cut red meat, that is the big, big feast, high feast. And when the second elder son came back, he said, what is all this? What's happening in the home? And uh, the, 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 the laborer said, Hey, your younger brother has come back, so we are all happy. Your dad is happy. Why he came back? He already took all his inheritance and gone. Why he came back? He wants to take more. He is not happy. He is angry. He refused to come inside. This is the Pharisee nature. So the father came, he said, my son, we must enjoy, your brother has come back. <laughs> I have been all these years serving you like a servant, obeying all your commandments, 
You did not care even to slaughter one lamb for me. And now when this your son came back, you made such a big feast. What is this? My son, what are you talking? So you see the point. Yeah. This elder son says, I have been all, all these years with you. But in the father's house. But what was his understanding? I was serving like a servant. He never knew that is his father. He never realized he is in the father's house. So the father says, my son, all what I have is yours. That's the point. You are my son. You think about a servant that I did not slaughter a lamb for you? The father says, all what I have is mine, yours. All what I have is yours. Now your brother, who was dead, is alive now. Now only it's an eye-opener for him. He, because he was not understanding his father, and the relationship, the father and son, he was thinking he is like a slave, servant, working hard for obeying all the commandments. So that is the Pharisee nature. I obey all the commandments, but that's not enough. What is your relationship with God? So he was thinking he is like a slave. He says, you are my son. If you are my son, he says, all what I have is yours. This is your inheritance. And you are talking about, you have not sorted a lap. This is our situation. This is not gospel. Mm -hmm. Gospel is when the younger son came back, the father was so happy without criticizing him, without judging him. Why have you done all these things? Why were, where were you? You were with the prostitutes. You destroyed all my money. Bring all that. He did not say anything. He said, all, all, don't worry. He hugged him. He admitted him. He gave him. He accepted him. He forgiven him. That is the good news. Good news. He did not made a list of all the faults. He already made a list, but he said, keep it off. He hugged him. He went ahead in the mo to the to outside to hug him. So now the point I said to this is, what when the end will come? The end will come. Everybody think, oh, next year there may be end because there are signs of wars and big things are happening. There may be end of the world <laughs> because so many, uh, uh, so many false prophecies we hear. But Jesus himself, one important thing said, this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached throughout the world for a witnessing. That can you believe all the millions of Hindus and billions of Muslims and, and uh, Buddhists, they will all say, yes, I believe Jesus is the Lord. Can you believe this? Amen. Can you believe this? Yes. It will happen. Yeah. It will happen. Why? He said it. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached Throughout the world, then the end will come. Now you know why Pope is going to Indonesia, Pope is going to all these Muslim countries. He's preaching. In, 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 when he visited Abu Dhabi, about 100,000 people were in the football stadium for the Holy Mass. And his homily was, his homily was this, he said, the first words Jesus said, to the humanity in the Sermon on Mount was, 
Blessed are you. Correct? Now we never, I have preached this more than 25 years or so, but I never thought the point what he said. <laughs> you know the point he said? The point he said, pattern said, the point he said, Jesus did not say you will be blessed. <laughs> Jesus said you are blessed. Blessed are you. That's it. Do we think like that? He said, blessed are you. He did not say you will be blessed. Now when I hear this, I was wondering. Now I got so much connections. The first connection is incarnation. Why all are blessed? Because they are seeing their God this whole humanity, none of them were Christians there. They are all in his body, mm -hmm. in incarnation. And they are seeing God face to face. Can you believe it? They are seeing God face to face. Face to face. God become man. And he's standing in front of them. That is what our life also. Now in the Eucharist, is the real presence. We see him real. We say when two or three gather together, God is there. That is not real presence. That is the spiritual presence. Where two or three gather together, God is there. there spiritually he is there. But in the Eucharist, this is the Lamb of God who took away the sin. This is Jesus said, I am the living bread. I am, I am, I am the real person. So we are also able to see him, not only see him, but also to eat him. What does he need? You are able to eat him. <laughs> so St. Augustine says, the one who eat become like him. A Christian become Christ because <laughs> he eat him. We are not only Christian, we become Christ. 795, I think. 795. Catechism. 795. 95. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See, let us rejoice. This is from St. Augustine. Let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, but Christ himself. Do you not understand, do you understand and grasp, brethren, God's grace towards us? Marvel and rejoice. We have become Christ. For he is the head, we are the members. He and we together are the whole man, the fullness of Christ. Then is the head and the members. But when, but what does head and members mean? Christ and the church. Okay, I think, oh, I forget the time, you know. That is my, yeah. So now let us thank God. Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy that you will die and you will rise? <laughs> Do you want to die fast? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I want to die fast because I want to rise fast. But the, the, like St. Paul says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. You have to preach the gospel. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I hope. Now, how many of you feel that through this, oh, see now a healing happening. Shala, hala, 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 hala. Everybody, everybody, praise God. Now, all what we spoke here, a confirmation to that. The Lord is healing someone, either in this group or those who are watching online. Let us, this is according to Mark's Gospel, which says they preach throughout the world and the Lord confirmed their preaching through signs and wonders. So let us pray for that sign.
Shalom, 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 Shalom. Now the healing happening. <laughs> I am amazed. The healing happening is on the hip joint. Hip joint. Hip joint. Hip joint. Hip joint. Hip joint. There are two more healings. Two more healings. We will do the healing session later. This is a healing confirmation of this message what we spoke, okay? Yes. The second, second, second healing is... <coughs> See, I see here what we call at the lower part of the thyroid. Uh, no, not thyroid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. The but the jaw. Yeah. Just pelvic jaw. Here there is a small gland. Not, not the void. Yeah. 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 A small gland here that is something like pulsating. It is. <laughs> it is tick 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 something happening there a movement it is moving it is having some movement it's pulsating yeah it is could be you could be seeing the carotid yeah that's there. and the lord is healing that the lord is healing that The third one, the third one is, third one is, third one is something, a pain in the eye, in the eye, that is on the eyelid, on the eyelid, a small boy, red color boy. Yeah, my Birmingham sis, anyone got any of those? Yeah, something like a boy. And which is painful, which is painful. And it's painful and the Lord is healing that. These are small things, but the important is, it is a sign. It's a sign that these teachings to confirm. Now, yeah, who's that? Who? Oh, <laughs> you have something, something like that? No, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> eh? The Lord is touching it. And is it now healed? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. It's not there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, already here it's in. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. So now there is no pain? No. no pain. Praise the Lord. It will subside fully. So these are very important when we preach the gospel. The message what we preach has to be confirmed by the Lord Himself. And then only the gospel, it sink, sink. Sing. Because otherwise, all what I said about the resurrection of the dead is not easy. Once I was explaining this to a very spiritual person, said, oh, it will really happen. <laughs> what do you, I believe. He could not believe it. He could not believe it. I remember in another situation, a woman came to me, she has a big back pain back pain. So healing session over but nothing happened to her. 
So she came to me personally to pray for. But when I was praying for her, I saw an evil spirit working in her. Then I asked the Lord, what is the meaning of this evil spirit? So the Lord says, that is her false faith. We say a, a, a wrong faith. She has a false faith about the resurrection of the body. Resurrection. So I slowly, I did not say all that vision. I said, ah, how are you doing? How is your faith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a traditional Catholic. I, from my generation, we are Catholic. Okay, you, you, you believe all the part of the credo, particularly the last part when we say, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Oh, yeah, 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 I believe. That is nothing but reincarnation. Huh? <laughs> That's it. That is nothing but reincarnation. Oh, no. The Lord said, that's the point. So many people believe in reincarnation. Paragraph 113, 1013 says, there is no reincarnation. The human being live only once. They never end. Their life never ends. You know, that's the thing. Death is the end of man's earthly pilgrimage, 1013. Of the time, grace and mercy with God offers him so as to work out his earthly life in keeping with the divine plan and to decide his ultimate destiny. When the single course of our earthly life is completed, we shall not return to other earthly lives. It is appointed to, for man to die once. There is no reincarnation after death. So it's very interesting. So many people come and say there was a woman who went to India and lived with the in ashrams. You know, ashram means from the Hindu ashrams. So she came hearing an Indian preacher has come. She thought this is another guru from India. So. When she heard my preaching, he said, Thomas, I was fascinated in India. Ten years I was in India with the gurus. And now only I realize all my problem is because in my last birth, I was an animal. And now in this birth, I am a human. In the next birth, I may be something else, you know. Now that is why I have all the problem. In the last birth, I was something. My God. I said, what is your name? So she said a Christian name. I don't want to say the name. Uh -huh. So as an example, Christina. Oh, you are baptized? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a traditional Catholic. I now, do you know when you were born, God created you? Is that right? If God created you? Uh -huh. Yes, maybe. Yeah, 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 God created. So how God created you? God created you like God. Like God means in his image and likeness. What is image and likeness? Same. I don't know, she said. No, that's the point. That's why you got, you went to, uh, you went to the ashram of Hindus. You don't know why God created you and how God created you. God created you in the image and likeness. Image means the personality. In 357, God created you as a person. God did not create elephant as a person. God created elephant, horse, animals, sun, moon, but they are not person. Understand? They are not person. 357. See, being in the image of God, human individual possesses the dignity of a person. Person. And from where this personality he got? God. God is a person. God is the first person. 
So we call in grammar first person, English grammar when you read first person. What is first person? God. And we are created. And what is likeness? Likeness is spirit. He is spirit. So we are also spirit. We have a soul. So what do you want to say? I want to say God never die. God's life never ends. So he created us with a life which never ends. And how can you say you can have reincarnation? Your life never ends. <laughs> Your life never ends. <laughs> then how can you have reincarnation? So when you say reincarnation means you don't believe in the life eternal. You don't believe in the eternal life. Thomas Paul, so what do you mean that all these millions of Hindus, they are believing, is it a lie? Absolutely lie. It is not truth. I am an Indian. I lived, I am born in India, but I never believed in reincarnation. I did not pray transcendental meditation. I prayed our Father. Pray. Oh, so our life never ends. Correct. You die, but that is not your end. You are entering into eternal life. So you cannot have reincarnation by the fact it is not only Christians, even Hindus. They are all human beings. God created a human being like God with a soul, with a soul, with as a person. A person, how can a person become an animal? Imagine. The dignity God has given to a person like God, how can that person become an animal? Imagine. And you see millions and billions of people believe in such type of thing and that is a fashion nowadays oh i go to india i go to that ashram i stay there i live there i enjoy their way of life okay, all christians <laughs> okay so this is where our faith in general become going down 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 nobody is there to teach this so that is why I am not teaching something from my head. I am teaching from the teaching of the Holy Catholic Church. Amen. And when we learn this, then our faith becomes strong. Amen. Now once again there is a healing. Now to confirm this message that there is no reincarnation. Believe it. All those who will be watching this video also, believe this. Paragraph 1013 is the reference. Now, to confirm this, there is a healing. The Lord is giving a healing. The Lord is showing me a healing. Ah, the healing is in the nose. There is a growth in the nose, you know. There is a growth in the nose. Tuck, it's gone away. It is now free. Inside the nose there was a growth, a lump of flesh. But now, as you believe this, there is no reincarnation. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's a sign that about this teaching. Okay. Now we are going to pray for healing for everybody. Okay. So let us let us all stand up and we will pray. We will pray. Praise you, Jesus. Let us Thank sing it. Thank you, Jesus.
everybody come in front. that you believe, let us believe that Jesus is the only Savior. You believe that? Correct. Jesus is not a private property of Christians alone. Eh? Jesus loves all religion people because all religion people, whoever they may be, they are all children of God and Jesus has come to save all of them. Do you believe that? Say louder. Yes. 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 That is important to know the healer. <laughs> Why Jesus is giving the healing? He gives the healing because he is the he is God. And he loves every one of us. Suppose you as a mother love your child. If the child is sick, it is pain for you, correct? And you immediately do all what is needed for the child to be healed. So the same way, God is our father and Jesus is our brother. Mother Mary is our mother. So today the Lord is going to bless us. The Lord is going to heal us with his compassion. In Jesus' biblical place, so many people gathered and when Jesus saw them, none of them were Christians. None of them were Catholics or Christians. Okay? Correct? Yes. There were no Christianity at that time. But he moved with compassion. <coughs> he moved with compassion, seeing their difficulties. So let us believe. Now, in our case, I hope you are all baptized Christians. Correct? Yes. Everybody? Is there anybody not baptized? All are baptized. So God's compassion and grace is in abundance. Now with that belief, you pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will come and pray over you, okay? Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Empower us, God. Oh, Holy Spirit. Anoint us, Holy Spirit. Shandala, Hanabala, Hanabala. Shandala, Hanabala.
God knows even I your small pain. How much God loves it.
I help you. I help you. I know you are struggling. I help you. I help you. Be confident. Be confident. I am with you. I take all your back. I make you responsible for greater things. Yeah. 
will remain here. We will not need any time to set up. So 8.30, all of you please come. We will have another strong session. Thank you very much for Thank you. everybody. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for the singing. Thank you very much. That's a good idea. Okay, so now good night. God bless Thank you. you. Bye bye. bye. Yeah, I'm coming. Just give me